Welcome back. It is Sunday, August 4th in the MLB. Our three best bets are on the way. It is Austin, joined by Logan today, joined by your guys' favorite special guest. Get it out, Logan. The broom is here. A wonderful Saturday. Let's do a victory lap. We had White Sox and Twins nerfy. Nerfy Nation got to celebrate a winner. Six up, six down. Couldn't do it any better. Then we had that both one plus runs in the first five parlay. What do we have? Uh, Blue Jays and Yankees, Orioles and Guardians. Pretty sweat free there. And then we wrapped up the night. Mar Mariners are down 5 0. They came back. Umpire, we appreciate you. We needed that ump. We got a sweep in the worst way. The ump might have helped us out. We might have paid him off. He might have had Mariners ML. But that's not our fault. We're going 3-0. and Let's try to do that once again today. As always, if you are new, do us a favor. Hit that subscribe button. Drop a like. Let's make August a huge month. It's been a good start so far. Three days in. But it's Sunday. Sunday baseball is a little wonky. But let's dive into the picks. We don't have a parlay of the day today. Those will resume on Monday. Uh, but we're going to dive into the picks today. Let's waste no more of your time. We're going to throw it to Logan. He's going out to Sunday night baseball. Logan, what's the play for that game? Yeah, we're, we're starting with my favorite pick is in Sunday night baseball. I, I could have went back to the Mariners Philly series. We're 2-0 in that series. But you know what? I I, I, I would be on Mariners money line anyway. But this is just kind of a weird, weird spot. I'll take, I'll take my coins from that series and move on. I like this under a lot between the Cardinals and Cubs under eight and a half. Minus 105 odds on FanDuel is your best value there. Now, if you're looking at this series, we got three straight games of nine total runs in the series. I think the trend is broken today on Sunday Night Baseball. We've seen before, you know, Sundays are kind of the weirdest day in baseball to bet because it's getaway day for a lot of these teams. And you know what? It, it makes for some weird trend-breaking type of scores. If, you, if you're seeing a, a, you know, a huge under series, then Sunday there's like 10 runs. And then vice versa, it happens a lot more than you realize. But I like the starting pitching we get. I think it's actually the best starting pitching matchup in this series so far. Uh, if we're looking at, at the pitching matchup, I mean, you could talk about Justin, or you could talk about Sonny Gray versus uh, Imanaga, but this one is sneaky, just like a second tier below that. It's Justin Steele and Miles Michaelis. Justin Steele, let's talk about him first. He starts for the Cubs, 3.38 ERA and a 1.11 whip for Justin Steele. Now, Steele, tough on lefties, and that's very big because we know it. We can't, you can't get the lefty lefty matchup. You can't have those guys reaching. He's only allowing a 145 batting average to lefties. To righties, it's slightly higher at, at 238. But again, decent splits versus both sides of the plates for Justin Steele. This is Steele's first time facing the Cardinals this year. With too much familiarity, I could get worried because Justin Steele, when these teams are facing him multiple times, like the Reds have seen him a lot. And what did the Reds just do in his last start? He gave up five earned runs to the Reds. You can't have that. Luckily, the the Cubs do not, or the, luckily the Cardinals do not have that familiarity yet against Justin Steele. They've ha they've seen him before, obviously in seasons past, but this season they have not, and that's what we like to see. And four starts against the Cardinals last season too. He was good. He he never allowed more than three earned runs, and two of those starts were six innings pitch, one earned run. So he actually had really decent success against the Cardinals last season. Can he continue that again this season at home? I think so. Over the last 14 days versus lefties, Cardinals 11th in batting average, 13th in OPS, 12th in WRC+. So about middle of the pack. They're not they're not absolutely scorching against lefties, but they're not bad either. So they're about middle of the pack there. I still think Justin Steele goes out and gives us a quality start in this one. I would be very shocked if he does, uh, you know, get, end up getting like blitzed by the Cardinals in this one. I, I don't see their, them pouncing on Justin Steele. And then on the other side, we've got Miles Michaelis starting for the Cardinals. 4.99 ERA and a 1.23 whip for Michaelis. He's got some weird home road splits, which again, it actually favors us in this one. He's got a 6.38 ERA at home versus a 3.89 ERA on the road. Good thing for us, Miles Michaelis is pitching on the road in this one. So for whatever reason, he hates the pitcher friendly ballpark that is Bush Stadium. I, I don't know. I don't know why, but you know what? He he'll hopefully pitch well for us here in Wrigley today. He's got mixed results facing the Cubs, though. So like I said, Steele hasn't faced the Cardinals. Michaelis has faced the Cubs. He's faced them like every month of the, the season so far. He he faced them five and one thirds innings pitched, six earned runs recently in July. That one, that one can be a bit dicey, but then he also had a six and a third innings pitched. Or, uh, one earned run game at Chicago in June. So that was a road start again, where he's a lot better on the road. And then six innings pitched three earned runs in May. That one was once again at home. So he's had two home starts versus the Cubs. Not not great results, but he's had a, a, a road start against them. Good result. 
Can he come out and pitch solidly, you know, against the Cubs today? I think he can. And 190 plate appearances, the Cubs have a, they have a 268 batting average against Michaelis, but a 243 expected batting average. The expected numbers are actually on Miles Michaelis' side. Just depends on how locked in he is. I can tell you right now, guys, watched a lot of Miles Michaelis. I'll be able to tell in the first and second inning what, what type of outing we're getting because if he's just missing location right over the heart of the plate, uh, just uh, you might might have to chalk it early. But he's a good pitcher at at hopefully navigating those those uh, you know bad innings. Hopefully he can just avoid the the blow up the four or five earned run type inning in the, that one. I still do like Miles Michaelis. He's a savvy veteran for a reason. And the Cubs, what I why I am comfortable backing the under in this one is because the Cubs are still 29th in batting average, 25th in, in OPS, and 25th in WRC plus versus right-handed pitching over the last 14 days. They just have not been that great against uh, righties. We still have to fade them. I, I still think in, in this matchup, we're, we're going to see Miles Michaelis go out. He, he'll be able to limit the damage. Are they? Is he going to shut him out? Probably not, but he'll be able to limit the damage enough to get us under this 8.5 total. And over the last 14 days, we'll go to bullpens. St. Louis, 18th in bullpen ERA. Cubs, second in bullpen ERA. Cubs bullpen has actually been really good. They're in, they're in good form right now. we got to trust them. Cardinals bullpen, eh, so-so. This series has been wacky. It's been filled with errors. It's been fil filled with late-game scoring. I, I was looking at the box score yesterday going, how the heck did that, that Cardinals-Cubs game once again go over? And it just barely creeps over that nine runs. I think today we see a lower scoring game on Sunday Night Baseball. Both these teams give it to me. Sunday Sunday is when the trends are broken. I'm standing on business today with that under. But Austin, you got a player prop for us. Where are you going? Yeah, if you've been betting the under in that Cards Cub series, you've probably broken every single TV in your home because they keep losing on errors. If we're going to lose today. Just don't let it be an error. Let the pitchers get rocked. We uh, An error will really trigger both of us. But for my favorite pick, I'm rocking his jersey, man. We got the grunting Robbie Ray going on the mound. Logan loves Robbie Ray. Uh, if you've never watched him pitch, he does grunt when he pitches, so it is quite the experience. But we're taking his under two and a half earned runs, minus 131 on Caesars as he's pitching an early start here in Cincinnati in Great American Ballpark. Now, Robbie Ray got injured all of last year, only had one start in 2023. This will be his third start of the year, so he's kind of knocked off the rust. And his first start, if you remember, he actually was throwing a no-hitter. He threw a no-hitter in five innings against the Dodgers to give up one earned run in there. Then his second start didn't look good. Four and a third, seven hits, four earned runs, and three homers. So, obviously struggled to keep the ball in the ballpark. That was against the Athletics, a team that and A's against lefties is literally a wagon. They are one of the best teams against lefties. Just really in July, June, July, even in August, they've been really, really good. Now you get a Reds team that I'm okay fading here. Now the Reds, and we think about this series, they got no hit on Friday by a lefty in Blake Snell. Yesterday, they were able to tag up Kyle Harrison. So maybe they're doing better against lefties. But if, you're, if you've are you noticed how Kyle Harrison has pitched this year, he hasn't been great unless he's facing the Rockies when he literally becomes the best pitcher in the MLB. But any, outside of the Rockies, he hasn't been an elite. And the, the Reds have already seen Kyle, Har or Kyle Harrison before, and that was back in like May. And they got three iron runs on him then. Now you get a guy in Robbie Ray that you've never seen. A lot of these hitters I've never seen. And the only guy that's really seen him is Ty France. And he hasn't been great for the Reds or, or the Mariners to pre getting getting waived or whatnot. But since the start of July, the Reds have not been good against lefties. They're batting 195, second lowest of the 75 WRC plus third lowest first left-handed pitching. They've just struggled. They've hit their a couple lefties here and there, the guys that are really bad, but I really like Robbie Ray today. I think he's a really solid pitcher. I mean, Robbie Ray has won a Cy Young before. This is a guy that has a 29, well, you look at the, the Reds over that time span, a 29% K rate. Ray's K props in at six and a half. And his first start, he had eight, second start, only four. So the fact they got a six and a half K prop, maybe that helps us get out of damage. Maybe there's runners on first and second, one out. And that's what kind of a time you needed a strikeout or maybe even zero outs. You need a strikeout there to kind of try to preserve not giving up two runs. And Robbie Ray has that potential. I just think he's going to pitch well today. Look, his hits hits allowed line is four and a half at plus money. He will walk, guys. So I'm not taking his outs here because I don't expect Robbie Ray to go far into this game. He might only go five innings pitches. His third start. They're not going to let him throw 115 pitches, but I think they'll let him throw in the 90s. If he's looking all right, good for him. If he's not looking good, they might yank him early. And we just have to hope that he maybe got out of dodge in that in those uh, first five innings. So I really like Robbie Ray today. Um, he hasn't obviously pitched a ton this year, but I like you know a couple starts under his belt. 
think he pitches well enough today to give us a win here. Under two and a half earned runs. Played to about minus 140. I can't imagine that prop goes too high. Uh, in terms of juice, it is Great American Ballpark. So that over under will still stay in the eight and a half, nine, nine and a half range just because a great American ballpark, one of the more hitter-friendly ballparks, but I think Robbie Ray can keep the ball in the ballpark, and if he can, should have a really good chance at cash in this Robbie Ray under two and a half earned runs. I'll be grunting with him this afternoon in an early 12.05 p.m. Eastern start. But yesterday, we saw the return of Nerfy Nation, and we'd be fools not to run it back. Let's do it, Logan. We're going with another Nerfy. We need the music, and more importantly, we need the dang flag, baby. Wave them. Flags are out. Nerfy Nation's been good to us this season. We cash one six up, six down. Didn't even get a runner in scoring position yesterday. Can we do it again today? I have a feeling we'll have some base runners, but hopefully we can get a winner. Where are we going? Because there's a couple Nerfies you can probably pick on the card. We're heading out to Atlanta. We're taking the Marlins and Braves. No run first day. Currently minus 115 on FanDuel. Pretty playable value on almost every single book. We played it about minus 130. I don't see it getting more juice than that. I will start with Max Free. Now, typically, I'm a guy that likes to avoid guys making their first start back from the IL. And that is what Max Freed is here today. But I'm going to trust him. I think Max Freed can pitch well here. I like him in this spot. His earned runs line is one and a half. And he's been a good pitcher in terms of nerfies. Last year, Freed was 13 and two on nerfies. And he's continued that momentum into this year. 14 and four, six and one at home. Now on paper, the Marlins are sixth in first inning runs. They are a team that have been able to score in the first inning. And they've done it once or twice in this series already. But I still think Freed can do his job. When the Marlins, if they want to put up two or three runs, go for it. But in terms of their percentage scoring in the first inning, they're still like a 76% clip. Anything about who Freed's going to face? Edwards is the number one guy. you got to get him out. He's been scorching hot. But Berger's batting like 200 against lefties. Rivera's been struggling. Jesus Sanchez, who is a lefty, might be batting in that in the cleanup spot. Now, technically, Jesus Sanchez has really good splits against Freed. He's like four for seven. But against lefties this year, he's only batting 119. So maybe something's going to give there. I just think Freed can pitch decently today. Get us those first three outs. Keep, hopefully, Edwards off the base paths because he is a guy that likes to steal. And if you need to do that, do that. I'm confident he can get the other three outs that we need for this nerf feed. But, Logan, who's going to have to take us home in the bottom half of the inning for the Marlins? Yeah, it's going to be Edward Cabrera starting for the Marlins. Now, Cabrera, 9-1 and one on nerfies this season. 17-3 and three last year. Weirdly enough, I mean, he's actually one of those Marlins pitchers we can trust. You know, Sandy, he's down. Uh, Jesus Lazardo, he's down. So we're like, who's left for this Marlins team? You know, because they, they've been the wagon for us uh, for Nerfies over the last few years. Cabrera, Edward Cabrera, very good option in this one. He's, he's pitched well. And he's facing a Braves team that is 17th in first inning runs. Are they a little bit better at home? Sure. But I still think he's able to navigate his way through the, the order. There's a lot of boom-bust hitters. In, in that top half of the order for the, the Braves, you know, guys like Ozuna and Olsen, guys that swing for the fences and, at, and for extra base hits. I think Edward Cabrera uses that aggression uh, with them, and I think he closes it out. I think he gets us his last three outs we need. Nerfy Nation, we are so back. Let's fly the flags. Let's cash another Nerfy. This one we really like, so hopefully we can cash one for that 130 start, I believe. So let's have another 3-0 no day. Let's bring out the brooms, and uh, there is no both first five uh, parlays or stuff. Nothing I really love today. So let's go 3-0 and on these picks, a recap of them. We have Marlins and Braves Nerfy. Let's wave the flags. We have Robbie Ray under and earned runs. We have Logan's pick Sunday Night Baseball. Cubs Cardinals under 8.5. Let's have a great day. Have a great Sunday. Have a great rest of your weekend. We'll see you guys back bright and early Monday morning. We'll see you then. Peace.